There's another kind of stereoisomerism. If a molecule is intrinsically asymmetric, doesn't have a plane of symmetry, it's often the case that that molecule and its mirror image are different molecules. So here's a molecule, bring in a mirror plane, those are reflections of each other. Those molecules are different, and I can prove that to you. Here I have two models where if I placed a mirror plane right here, these molecules represent mirror images. That is, there's a direct reflection here to here, here to here, here to here, here to here. So these molecules, mirror images, are they the same? If I take this molecule, let's bring it over and try to superimpose it on this one, we find out they're not. Here yellow and yellow match up, but green and purple don't. These two molecules, though at first glance appear identical, are actually stereoisomers of each other. There are stereoisomers called enantiomers. When I have this kind of non-superimposable mirror image, the isomers are called enantiomers and the molecules are called chiral. Now, chirality is the same property your hands have. Your hands are mirror images of each other, but they're not superimposable. I can't make my thumb line up perfectly and get all the fingers to line up. So my hands have this property. There's a handedness to these molecules. We give these molecules designations L and D to distinguish one isomer from the other. They're very difficult to distinguish and it often takes a sophisticated spectroscopy experiment to distinguish them. Here's the two mirror images and I'll bring them together in this graphic to again demonstrate their mirror images are not superimposable on each other. These are different molecules. This is important because in nature, many of the molecules in your body are chiral. Alanine, for example, that's a common amino acid, and virtually all the amino acids have this chiral property. That is, they have an asymmetric center, a carbon with four different things attached. Here's a carbon with ammonia group, a carboxyl group, a hydrogen, and a methyl group attached. And here's its mirror image. They're different molecules in a very subtle way. They have just a handedness. And there's a handedness that predominates in nature. In your body, you have all L amino acids. So there's a preference in nature for one hand over the other hand. In your DNA, your DNA has a helical coil to it. And all your DNA helical coils in the right-handed direction, left-handed coiling DNA isn't found in natural living systems. So this handedness is interesting. It appears in your body and you might say, well, if these molecules are so similar, how does your body know that it needs only L? In fact, it's completely true. If you were to feed a person all D amino acids, it would be protein. You could eat it, but you would actually die because your body can't process the other handedness. And here's a, here's a little simple example why. If your hand is right and you go to shake a hand, you can detect whether you're shaking a right hand. A right hand fits into your right hand. Your hand is chiral and it can detect, I need that same chirality to shake hands. If a left hand comes in, they don't fit together right. So there's a handedness that predominates and it can be detected in nature. If a hand is completely achiral, here's a completely symmetric hand, now a left hand can shake this and a right hand can shake this interchangeably. So this achiral system doesn't have that property of I need to have one isomer to have that particular fit. Chirality, a very subtle form of isomerism, is important in nature right down to the very molecules that make up our bodies.